This is a Zax.com special report. Now, in this part of our special coverage on the stock market, technician Kevin Matris will present his balanced strategy. Kevin is here with us right now. Mm -hmm. So so clarify something for me, would you please? Right. I know that you've been bullish since the market turned around in 2009. Right. And bullish even up till about two weeks ago, it right. seems to me. Correct me if I'm wrong, your outlook on the market seems to have changed on or around July the 29th right. when the second quarter GDP uh, numbers came out. Right. And around that time, you started placing some bearish bets. Right. What it, gives? It's funny. The uh, I was bearish leading up to this, and I did kind of change my mind abruptly. Uh, what's interesting, though, is that the market was really struggling going into the GDP report. And uh, what I ended up doing was I ended up buying the inverse S&P 500 ETF the day before the GDP report, not necessarily because I was scared about the GDP report, but I was worried about what Congress was going to do going into the August 2nd debt ceiling debate deadline. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the market back then, you can see that the market was kind of breaking down technically. Uh, but again, I just kind of wanted to balance my portfolio out because I was worried that Congress was going to screw this thing up, which we now know they did. They have a great capacity to do the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the GDP report came out the very next day. And in my opinion, I thought it was just a shocker. Uh, as a matter of fact, we talked about it, I believe, on the roundtable that day or the next day. And if I'm not mistaken, Terry, I think you called me a wet blanket at that time. Although, in wake of recent chain of events, I believe that uh, that, that was the right call. And uh, I, will take, wasn't so wet, I will wasn't. take that as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> but knowing how usually bullish you, you are right. uh, and optimistic... It was really surprising to see that you turned out, you know, bearish right. so quickly. You know, I, I was kind of surprised myself. Uh, for, in my opinion, you know, when, when that GDP number came out, I believe that that was a game changer. And if we go through what they said, check it out. Q2, right, that was the first thing that came out. Everybody was expecting the number to come in at 1.9%, and instead the government serves up a 1.3% growth rate. So that in and of itself was disappointing. That, I believe, was a 30% uh, miss, so it was terribly uh, disappointing. But then, if you think about it, everybody was expecting the second half of 2011 to be fantastic. So I think people were expecting the growth rate in the second quarter to kind of ramp up into the second half. Uh, but then we get this, right? The mm -hmm. Fed was saying it was going to be good. Economists were saying it was going to be good. And then we get this disappointing number. But in my opinion, the most shocking thing was what they did to Q1 of 2011. The whole world had been believing that the U.S. economy had grown at 1.9%, and then they came out and they just eviscerated it down to 0.4%. That was a 78% downward revision. Literally had to be one of the worst GDP reports I had ever seen. Yeah. Then to top it all off, they went back and they actually downgraded Q3 and Q4 of 2010. Mm -hmm. Now, to be fair, they did increase 2010 in its entirety. They bumped up the growth rate to 3%, so that was nice to see. But everybody was expecting Q3 and Q4. We had been told that Q3 and Q4, we were accelerating into the end of the year. We all thought those were spectacular numbers. But the picture they then painted was one of a decelerating economy as opposed to one that was accelerating. And it was at that point that I started getting bearish because I'm thinking to myself, how are we possibly going to meet these lofty expectations? We're not going to. Then fast forward to today and you get that S&P downgrade and that is really when the sky started to fall apart. Well, I enjoy talking with you because I know that you look at, at the charts. Right. And uh, for those who, who are bent to the technical side of the mm -hmm. markets. Did, good bend. That's a good bend. <laughs> did the market throw off? Any clues, uh, chart patterns wise, right. I guess is what I'm asking, as to what it was going to do? Yeah, interestingly enough, there really were a lot of key, uh, clues, so check this out. Uh, if you were to look at the chart right here, you will see a big potential bearish head and shoulders pattern forming right around the time the GDP numbers came out. That is when I got in, and that really was your first clue to consider getting into a short position. 
Then, if you take a look at this next chart, once it broke through the bottom end of that pattern, if you weren't short, that was your time to get short. If you were already short, that was your time to add to your shorts. And if you had a bunch of longs on, that was your cue to start pulling back some of your longs, right? Then if you look at this next chart, you can see this is now history. That is when the market literally just collapsed. So what are the charts saying now? Is the sell-off done? Are you eyeing up some sort of support <laughs> level? Uh, you know, if I were to look at support, I got another chart here. My support level, first level of support, came in at 1149. And I say that in the past tense because we've already broken through that. But the way I came up with support is this. You measure the size of the, uh, the pattern. So you take a look at the base pattern, then you subtract that, from the breakout point, right, the support level that it breaks through, that is how I arrived at the support level of 1149. But as this chart shows, you can see we blew through there once we got word of the S&P downgrade. Mm -hmm. So the next level of support, uh, looking at this thing technically, comes in at 1050. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that the market has to hit 1,050 and do so in a straight line. In fact, I'm not even saying the market has to hit 1,050 at all. But if it does go down from here, I believe this is where the technicians are going to be looking at, and, uh, and this is something that everybody is going to have to start paying attention to. Personally, though, I really do believe the market is ready for a bounce. I think we are grossly oversold. I think that we are long overdue, and I think that there is a lot of fantastic stuff stocks out there that just had so much value stripped away, I really do believe that we are ready for a bounce, but these are where the support levels lie right now. All right, so before we get into your trading strategy okay. in this new environment, let me ask you first about your views on a second a possibility of a second recession or probability. Is there one or isn't there in your view? At the moment, I say there is not going to be a second recession, and here is why. Uh, the lousy GDP numbers we got clearly showed that the economy was overstated in the past. It also shows that the forecasts were way too high. But once you look at the economic expectations for you know, GDP as a whole, and even for the world, you know that corporate earnings are going to have to be readjusted as well. However, here's the, uh, the, the caveat. Companies have already made the tough decisions over these last couple of years. So if you look at it, companies are now leaner than ever before. They are more profitable than ever before. They have more cash on hand than ever before. And if you look at uh, their valuations from a historical standpoint, they're still at historically low levels. Mm -hmm. So corporate America has already made their adjustments. Corporate America does not need to shrink itself government needs to shrink itself. Now, it is true that lower government spending is going to be a drag on the economy, but since businesses have already made the tough choices, I believe that they are in a better position now than they ever have been, and I believe that they are going to be able to weather the storm. Now, as for a recession, I believe the, uh, the, the greatest fear, unbeknownst to us, but I believe the precipice of the economy falling into a recession really took place in Q1 when we actually grew by only 0.4%. Then the market or the GDP uh, uh, bumped up to 1.3%. That's no great shakes, but it was a big increase from 04 So I see slow growth moving forward, but I don't see a recession at this point. Interesting. All right, let's get into your strategy okay. for the markets. You now are taking a more balanced approach in the right. market. What does that mean? Right. Well, while I do have uh, a balanced approach, I still kind of have a, a bearish bias at the moment. But I have been very careful not to lean too heavily in either direction. But let me just you know clarify, having a balanced approach doesn't mean you can't make money when the market goes down. On the contrary, I run a stock uh, portfolio service as well as an options portfolio service. And over the last couple of weeks, both of those services have actually been able to make money while the S&P was absolutely routed. Mm -hmm. And both services are actually up nicely for the year. Uh, but for me, and my goal right now is uh, to preserve equity, manage your portfolio, and also to make some money at the same time. This is what we have been doing, and I think that we're going to be able to continue to do this as we move forward with this balanced approach. All right, so talk a little more specifically. Okay. What should an investor be doing right now in this balanced approach? What are you doing right now? 
Well, first off, as you can tell from those slides, I do like to look at fundamentals and technicals, so those are two things that I am going to be considering. Uh, but for anybody who has a, a portfolio right now, I believe that you need to give yourself some downside protection. And I would strongly encourage somebody to take a look at the inverse index ETFs. Now you can do this with a 1x short, you can do it with a 2x short, there's even 3x shorts out there. For me personally, I don't particularly care for the 3x shorts because that's a lot of leverage and even if the market were to go 5% against you, that would be the equivalent of a 15% loss and that's something that I'm just not willing to assume. Mm -hmm. But these are the kinds of choices that are available and if you want to give yourself some protection, uh, I would tell you, take a look at the inverse ETFs. That's a great thing to, uh, to incorporate into your portfolio. If you take a look at some more specific sectors and industries, two things that, uh, that I am getting increasingly more bearish on is energy and healthcare. The first thing being energy. If it is true we are going to see slower economic growth, clearly this is playing out around the world, that means you're going to see less demand for energy. We already have a ton of supplies out there. I think that is going to cause prices to go lower. It's already happening as we speak, and I think this trend is going to continue. If you take a look at healthcare, that's the next thing that I am bearish on. I have loved healthcare. Last year, the, the healthcare stocks did great. This year, healthcare stocks were doing great in the, the first half. But I think the writing is on the wall. I think it is very clear that we need to get a grip on our entitlements. And Medicaid and Medicare indeed are on the chopping block. Both Democrats and Republicans have basically come out and said so. So I think until they make the announcement on what kind of cuts uh, those areas are going to suffer, I believe that that uh, industry is going to, uh, to take a hit. And that is an area that I am looking to get short. We even talked about this on some of the screen of the weeks in the past. Yeah. So I am still bearish on the, uh, the health care sector. Uh, and then also, too, I'm going to be looking at stocks to short in other industries as well. But the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to focus in on the bottom 50% of the Zacks ranked industries. We've said it before, but the top industries have a tendency of finding stocks that go up. The bottom industries typically will find stocks that go down. So I'm going to look at stocks that are overvalued with downward earnings estimate revisions with a crummy Zacks rank. And I think there's going to be a, a lot of good stock picking on the downside by doing that. Talk to me about the upside. The upside, that's always more fun, right? <laughs> uh, for the upside, I am really looking right now at big tech. And I think big tech is going to be a fantastic group to be in. And if you think about it, one of the reasons why corporate America and businesses are doing so good right now is because they have been able to uh, improve their businesses through the use of tech. And if you look at technology, this is where all of the, uh, the fantastic innovation is coming from. And the innovation is not just for business. It's coming from, or, or, or you can see this in entertainment, you can see it in uh, productivity, you can see it in transportation, on all sorts of different areas. So I think big tech, believe it or not, is going to be one of the safe havens for the next three, six months, and even beyond. Moreover, I'm also looking at business services. So again, I don't believe we are going to see a recession. And because of this, I believe that business services are going to be able to continue to aid companies in being able to increase growth, increase their productivity. I think that there's a, a lot of great stocks in this particular sector, and that's another area that I am going to be going long in. And then, just like I said with the, uh, the short side, for the long side, instead of the worst 50% of industries, I'm looking at the best 50% of industries. Once again, companies that have very low valuations, companies that have upward earnings estimate revisions, companies that have the best Zacks rank, like a one or a two, and when you stop to consider that the best industries literally outperform the worst industries by a factor of like four to one, that is where you're going to find your excess gains, focusing in on the best industries. Lastly, let me just say, I'm doing this through stocks, I'm doing it through ETFs, obviously. And I'm also looking at options. I think options is a great addition right now because a lot of people want to stick their toes back in the water and buy mm -hmm. stocks that they really like, but they're afraid what's going to happen if this thing falls off a cliff. 
The benefit with options is that you have a guaranteed limited risk. You can put in a small amount of money, you have a guaranteed limited risk, but if the market goes up, you can fully participate on the upside. And with the hyper volatility we are looking at in the market right now, I think having a guaranteed limited risk and an unlimited upside, very, very smart thing to add to your portfolio. So for me, taking a balanced approach, being flexible on the upside and the downside, I think over the course of the next three to six months, I think you can do fantastic no matter what the market does. All right. Well, we thank you for that balanced strategy <laughs> for all of us. And be sure to watch the other two videos in this three-part series on the bullish and bearish strategies. That's what the other two videos are on. Then determine which one suits you. And if it's Kevin's strategy that sounds right for you, then continue to get his insights through his chart patterns trader service. That's his stock picking service. Zax.com slash chart patterns trader is where you could learn more about that. If you like to use options, as he said, then you should look at his options trader trading service. Zax.com slash options trader is where you can find out more information on that. Or you can follow all of our experts once again and their strategies with Zax Ultimate. And you can learn more about Zax Ultimate at Zax.com slash ultimate. Hope you had time to copy all of those down. With Kevin, I'm Terry Ruffalo.